morning, and I'm going to have to thank Dante Gilmer for um, inspiration to do this video. I sold two bows on eBay to a really nice gentleman, um, and he had some questions because the one bow that I sold him was already painted and, and fully decked out in, in a nice color scheme, and the other one was just kind of in... I mean, no disrespect to this bow, kind of a plain Jane. It just had a dark oiled finish, but it could definitely be um, reflexed or recurved or um, uh, dyed, painted, decorated, um, adding a fancier handle um, wrap because it had a simple kind of suede side out buckskin handle wrap. And I would really encourage that. And in fact, I want to sell more. Bows. I have one currently on eBay, um, a finished but unfinished rawhide back paddle bow. Um, finished in a way it's fully tillered, it's ready to go. I think it's 62 pounds and it would make a marvelous hunting weapon. You know, if it was um, finished in darker muted, kind of camouflage schemes, which you can do. You can have, say, uh, First Nation style geometric patterns or the spots, and by doing them in, in more muted colors, they turn out to be quite wonderful camouflage. Of course, sometimes the bows I do are quite rakish. Uh, they might play game, you know. Certainly good for some things. Squirrels who aren't so observant. White-tailed deer, not so much. But that's neither here nor there. Now, I do different finishes, and it depends on the bow, definitely. If, for example, the one I'm doing for Emilio and Juniper Sinew, and snakeskin back, it's going to be, and also include a sinew bowstring, it's going to be completely like original for early periods. If you start getting into later periods, even with native bows, First Nation bows, um, after paint made the scene, uh, say commercial paint, enamels, and, and so have you, and glass beads and stuff, you can still be accurate, you know, if you're doing in the, the early to mid 1800s, um, the First Nations people did have um, access to paint and beads and, and stuff like that. So you can be, you know, considered very uh, accurate if you're using those styles of paints. Now going up, they didn't have what I usually use on my bows, on the bows that you're going to see most often, because the ones that I'll do that are, are commission style. This is actually kind of a Modoc, um, mostly pyramidal. It kind of does flare out in the center uh, style with ground pigments mixed with hide glue. And they would also take ground pigments and mix it with pitch um, um, for kind of a paint. But this is ground pigments. You can still get good, you know, colors, ground pigments mixed with hide glue. And then after it was done, a wash of hide glue to give it a glossy effect. And so this could be considered very authentic even in earlier periods before there were commercial paints um, to decorate your bows. Sinew backed, uh, mild recurve, and unlike a hoopa bow that they were noted for their bent tab tips, the, the Modox were kind of like the ones I use on my paddle bows. I really like those because you can just slide them off the end. And on a shorter bow, this isn't as short as they go. I mean, a lot of Modoc bows were 36 inches or even shorter. The recurve kept the strength from pulling off at long draws. I mean, you could literally, like, pop the string off at a long draw, and that's not a very good surprise. My paddle bows. This one, aside from the handle, that white, the white dots, it's dyed. Black dye, dark cherry, dyed circles, dyed black. This is the same black as this. This isn't painted black. That's dyed, but then white paint. And to get those circles, let's see if I have one. I don't. I was going to show you a paintbrush. And to get the circles, I actually used a rounded wooden end of, um, of the paintbrush, where I dipped that in. Slightly thinned down paint and then just bump, 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 bump. Using a pattern where I do that center one, and then the edge, and then let's see, did I do that on this one? 
then a center one again, and then one between. So you can get a, a decent pattern and keep things uniform. Now how I do the die tips, memorize it, and then I'll go on to the handle. I use, and this is Cherokee Red, which is really bright. Normally I don't use this. I bought this at Pine Hollow Longbows, and it's a Master Aerosmith stain. The Cherokee Red is really, really red, so I'll usually do a base coat of, and I did this on the shafts, of dark, dark cherry, and then I'll go over it with Cherokee Red to redden it a bit. And how I do the dyeing, my fingers from getting all stained is I will on my right hand because I'm right-handed a latex glove and when I didn't have these I've used um, Ziploc bags but these are so much nicer and I shall take paper towel and I will rip it a little section like that put that in my pocket and I'll fold 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 so I get a pad, usually a little smaller than that, I'll just do that. Dip it on there, so I've got this, and either by eye or making little marks with pencils, then just go and dyeing that. And on this, you can see, I didn't go for a clean edge, I like it kind of faded, so as this dries, then I kind of go like this, wash it up to get fades, and the same I did with that red. And so that gives it a more fady appearance. This is my personal paddle bow, by the way. Now for the circles, I've got it marked out. I'm not offhand. I can't remember really the distance here. I use this for a pattern bow because I really like it. Then I'll do little pencil dot where those are, and then I take this and I dip it in that dye, and I I don't want to saturate this too much because if it's too wet, then it'll wind up bleeding, but I let it dry a little bit, boink, boink, make, and this gives it a chance to dry a little bit, a dyed spot, and then I go back and very carefully, and this takes some practice, making the circles of the right size, and don't go too small, you want to have bold circles, and then you stand back, your wife might say, oh, that one's kind of funny. It has like a little smiley face, so you go back and forth until you get it the way you like it, and you've got your circles. Now for the handle, I took again, I used black Aerosmith die, and I wound up using that Q-tip and going around it, and then I did the dots, and I really like that. Now as far as a finish, this is just, this is just a heating it, and rubbing grease into it. And it doesn't matter what kind of grease it is. Grease is grease. I would suggest if you're making a hunting bow, don't use bacon fat because deer have the olfactory sense greater than bloodhounds. They can smell stuff that would just astound you. And so, like just basic lard or mink oil or bear grease that you'd use on your boots, that's fine. You know, if I'm using just plain old um, lard, I use a variety of greases. I might mix a little bit of olive oil in there, just a little bit, just to, to thin it out and let it soak in. And so that's the scheme for dyeing. The video I did down at the beach didn't really show the colors of this little bow. Here, I'll kind of do it slow so you can see it and then bring it in. Mostly dyed. There's some paint. This is white paint with the, the black spots, and I did it the same way as I did that other ball. Little spots right here. And let's see, the blue. Mrs. Stewart's Liquid Bluing since 1883. So this has been around. There might have been bluing before that, but the First Nations people on the plains, you've probably seen um, blue sinew on arrows. It was from, from this, and I'm assuming also, I just like blue, um, wiping this over the sinew. Now on this one, which is from an older period, the finish on this is just grease. 
It's just grease over everything. They also used pitch um, to, to waterproof the sinew backs. Um, snake skin covering over the sinew also waterproofs it. But on these, which, you know, I want to have these low maintenance. And also, in case you get caught in the rain, I don't want, you know, water to soak in or disturb that sinew back. I did use a water-based poly. Not on this. This is grease. On this one. I also use water-based poly on my rawhide back, unless somebody wants a truly primitive finish. Simply because that will help with water protection, help water, or help stop water from leaking in there and, and causing issues. And, and so it's kind of a, a compromise between ancient and um, modern. And I do both, you know, ancient style and also modern. On the eBay bowls, typically, I want to give a, 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 a nice, reliable, easy to maintain bow. You know, there's a price point. Um, on my upper level bows, I think people are more easily um, in tune. If you're going to pay three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars for a bow, you know, you're going to be willing to um, to maybe baby that bow a little bit, foul weather and stuff like that. You may not even take it hunting. It might be more of a display item or something that you like to just take out and shoot once in a while. And so I'm not going to do like a water-based polyurethane finish on those. Those are going to be authentic, authentic. Same goes with arrows. Now you could certainly use ground pigments and hide glue to crest your arrows or um, the modern paint or an older paint that would have been used in the 1800s such as uh, enamels. On this, the, the acrylic that I used, I went over it with a water-based polyurethane, although to get that, that gleam, you could certainly do a wash of hide glue. It's not going to have the water protection. You might get a little bit more after you do that hide glue and then greasing it. But these these are are pretty. These two arrows, this one goes with my shorter planes balls, 26 inches, and then longer draw up to 20, that's 28 inch draw, so I can do 30 inch draws with these. These get rough use. They might be lost in the woods for a few days after a rain, so I try to uh, make these as weather protected as possible. Now I had a question from Pedro about knots and he saw a Jack Crafty video and if I'm doing this is a, a sinew bowstring that I made a long time ago. This one actually is not a plated loop. This is actually knotted and native people did it both ways. You could plate a loop which means that you're doing a two-ply reverse twist and then sinking the end back in, it's kind of hard to explain, so you have a loop built in. Or you can just use knots. And knots work. This is a climb line. I was a climber for a tree service and then um, did, had my own client list. Don't do it so much anymore. It's a young man sport. But you could have a plated loop where you're actually weaving it in there and then you can go back and have your slip loop. Jack Crafty mentioned a timber hitch. You get a slip loop with a timber hitch just by, oh, let me do this slowly. I'm going around. This is so much easier than a B50 string to see. And then you just wrap it three, four times on there. And the tension will keep that. And then you've got a sliding loop. I don't use that so much. Another knot that was used, I don't know the name of it, but you go around, you go back over that, and then back through. Let me get that all dressed. And it's just like that. That was also used on bows. And this also creates a loop. Or, you know, this stuff so personal. You don't necessarily have to do a figure eight, but just this is what my B50 strings look like. It's perfectly fine, perfectly accurate. I did a figure eight on that, and then 
I didn't leave myself enough loop, then this can go through there and you can have a, a slip loop. And yes, Pedro, this does kind of resemble a noose. And so knots, knots are knots. You know, you've got a bow, you've got a string, you want to secure to the end. Um, you, it, it's hard to say um, that that knot was never used. Knots are knots. In bows, you know, just about everything was used. This is tough without a bow. I'm not even going to do that. That's the boyer's knot. Anyway, if you look at how to string and unstring a paddle bow, that's the knot I use. And since the light is so great, and gosh, it's November 17th and it's so warm out. Ah, there we go. Just a little refresher. Got that. I'm going for my five and a quarter inches. Goes around, goes around there, goes under, cinches it, back around the other way. And you're not probably seeing this too well, so it's going to encourage you to see one of my other videos.